You might recognize this motorcycle. It's a Gen 3 Suzuki Hayabusa, the most recent iteration that costs anything between 335,000 Rand and 343,000 Rand, depending on which color you want. You've seen it on the show before. First when we took it on a coastal ride from East London to Port Elizabeth. And then again when we sort of took it around a racetrack. Now we have it again. And the reason is very simple. Now everywhere you go with a Hayabusa, you just get people come up to you, admirers going, oh, is that a Hayabusa? I mean, we ride around with Ducatis and Embryo Gusters and all sorts of weird things, but it, none of them get the attention that this does. And people, it's not just captivation, it's actually, it's like a mood, it inspires. And we want to know what is it about this motorcycle that is so captivating to people. Beyond that, Suzuki phoned us and said, hey, would you like to ride a Hayabusa for a day? We went, yes, we would. People like the Hayabusa, and of course they would. It's an iconic motorcycle. The 1999 Hayabusa still has the record for the fastest standard road legal bike at 312 km per hour, right before the Japanese decided on a 300 km per hour limit in 2000. Still, this thing is built for speed, and even at the expense of other things. Now famously, the Hayabusa was designed to be ugly. True, look it up, in 1999, they made it look not like everything else. It needed to stand out. It needed to be a higher booster. And even if it wasn't a looker, at least people recognized it. I mean, you look, think of it this way. I mean, the, the monster from Alien. Imagine it was good looking. No, it's not good looking, it's trying to kill you. And that's sort of what this is. Although this, the 2023 model, doesn't look bad. Mr. Alien went for a makeover. In fact, part of the reasoning for the looks is that it was designed around the Peregrine Falcon, also known in Japan as the Hayabusa, the fastest animal in the world. Every line is carefully crafted with the use of a wind tunnel to make it as slippery as possible. That means that this machine is long and low, something that causes problems for some. To me, this bike is comfortable. We did that last run where we rode it from East London to Port Elizabeth, took just about the whole day. And I felt fine. And again, even today, I mean, we've been filming for most of the day. And most of the day I've been sitting on this. I feel fine. Honestly, I do. One of the things some people pointed out is that this bike is quite cramped. And it is quite cramped. It is. I mean, this bike is built literally like a missile. It's low and long. So you sit with the foot pegs fairly high and the handlebars fairly outward. And if you have long legs that don't bend very easily, yeah, okay. It, it might get a little bit cramped. Just do more exercises. That's what people keep telling me. While the Gen 3's outward appearance might be more appealing, it isn't limited to outwardly. The car journalists use it a lot, saying the cockpit is a nice place to be, and it's true. I love the yoke and all that of this thing. It's sort of artistic, but a beautiful sort of Japanese kind of way. And um, it's like they've really kind of made an effort into it, you know, made it look bold and brass and sort of sharp edges and things like that, aggressive, combined with this dash. It's got full TFT in the middle, combined with old school analog clocks on either side, which I think looks cool. And when you turn it on and it lights up, especially at night time, you must see it, it's like a cinema kind of light display. It's, 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 it's awe-inspiring, actually. That's what it is. While the looks are better, the Gen 3 is not entirely clear of criticism, starting with the spec sheet, where we find that the 1340cc inline-4 motor pushes 188 horsepower, seven less than the Gen 2. People weren't happy with this. They also weren't happy with the torque being squashed from 154 Nm to 150. But what we lost in top end, Suzuki made up for with other things. So right now, the way I'm riding this bike at this minute, it feels very calm, very docile, sophisticated even. It's not shouting, it's not jumping, it's not growling, it's not doing anything. But if you open the throttle just a little bit, whoa, you know, it's, it, 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 it's like, a, it's like a, having a pet tiger, one that's tame, you know, that you get these people that walk around with their tigers and the tiger's cool, the tiger's calm, 
It's very possible you can do it. Tigers can be very calm, very cool, chilled out, friendly creatures. They really can be. Even wonderful and cuddly and all of that. And that's a bit like what this thing is like right now. However, if you, let's just say irritate the tiger, it can get messy. It can get brutal. A bit like if I change down two gears and open the throttle. <laughs> that was a short run of one gear. <laughs> this is definitely a tiger. This is definitely a tiger. Where it loses out on top end, it makes up for in mid-range and throttle smoothness. All aided by a ride-by-wire throttle and a host of electronics. Enough seemingly to keep a Boeing in the sky. But we've been through all this on the show before. But what we missed out on though was a certain little electronic party trick. The launch control. Behold. Okay, let's just say some dude pulls up next to you on another bike and goes warm warm and he wants to dice. So, what you do then is while the bike's running, you hold down the start button until there we go, launch control comes up. Now, currently it's on one bar. We don't want to just beat this guy. We want to show him. So, you turn it up to three bars. Right. First gear. You hold the throttle wide open. And you go. <laughs> that's, that's mental. That's pure mental. I love that. And that guy's gone. He's definitely gone. <laughs> All is well in a straight line, but what if we showed some corners? Not just the smooth, easy corners of a purpose built track, but the rough and wild ones out in rural road wilderness. So here we go. Into the corner. <laughs> the Hayabusa weighs a geological 246 kilograms, and that's a lot. But it also has some things going for it, like a low center of gravity, some of our favorite suspension from KYB, and other bits that make the direction transition easier, like linked up brakes. So here's the thing, we have been we have been around corners on a racetrack on one of these and that was a lot of fun. And it it, it the bike worked admirably. Admirably is a good word. Uh, I'm not gonna I didn't immediately want to sign up and go and enter the next race on this thing thinking that is it, my championship hopes are now complete. But it was fun, it handled itself. You know, it could go around knee down, all of that kind of thing. It didn't feel nervous, it didn't feel anything, it felt very confident. It was very hard to turn, like you had to really sort of put your muscles into making a turn. But once it turned, it was so solid and so stable, it just it inspired confidence. And that's good on a track. On a public road, it is heaven sent. Absolutely heaven sent. It just gives you so much more the word confidence, I'll put it straight out there. To go into corners, you have to use your muscles a little bit. But once you're in the corner, the thing is just so solid, so stable. And just that stability is what will drive people to go faster on a, on a, or more confidently, there again, on a public road, than a bike that's quick and nimble, but twitchy and a bit unnerving. Does that make sense? There we go, my favorite corner. <laughs> knee down, knee down, <laughs> knee down on Hayabusa, on a public road. <laughs> it was really easy actually, it was really easy. <laughs> I want to go back and do that again. And with that we move on to the next party trick we haven't tested yet. Is it still the king of speed? Okay, that's all good and well. We've figured out that this is still, as I said, an excellent GT bike, classy, smooth, easy to ride, relatively comfortable, good in every way, but it's still a tiger, a tame tiger. Let's see what happens when we poke it with a stick. Okay, here we go. Open up. Third gear. Up to fourth. Already 100 km an hour. 
Motorcycles are the greatest things that have ever happened in the world, and bikes like Hayabusa make them even greater. Uh, now, I think our biggest problem is, is uh, you know, maybe the riders. We need a smaller rider. So what I think we should do is get a like invent a machine that makes the rider smaller. What's that? Stop eating. Now, man, be realistic. We must get a machine. That makes the rider smaller, you know, because that way it can make it go smaller and then more 